By the way, Captain, Sergeant Yumi was looking for you. But you know who this is, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Consider it done. That must make you our new envoy. Welcome to Inter... Stellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second-in-command. And you're someone I've already heard plenty about. One of the few survivors of the Sysdef debacle and defender of New Atlantis. Not sure if I should duck for cover around you or shake your hand, but you have my thanks for what you did for the city regardless. I was also told the President wants us to get you into the Armistice Archives ASAP. So, we've got no time to waste. You know what the Archives are, correct? Ha. Huh. All right. We'll start at the beginning. When the Colony War ended, the UC and Freestar Collective came to the agreement some weapons needed to be off-limits. Mechs. Xenowarfare. So, they gathered up all the relevant research materials, and sealed that information away. Terramorph data included, in the archives here in the city. Access to the archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people. The Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun to hand over their codes. Get them both and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. Very funny. This is going to be hard enough already. Both Ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now. I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Baroon? Captain, would you like to finish your briefing on the Ambassadors? Ah, <sighs> the good Ambassador Ratcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Hmm, it sounds as though I will enjoy this. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Report suggests there's a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for intel. Maybe even convinced to work with you. Yes, many. Don't steal anything. Don't get caught anywhere you're not supposed to. Absolutely do not harm anyone. If something goes wrong, we'll do our best to smooth things over. But I can't make any promises. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise.
Ambassador Balmor's a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmor stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Well, these days, they're primarily considered a security threat. House Varun Zealots, a fundamentalist outshoot of the group that stayed behind when the rest retreated into seclusion, want nothing more than to send everyone not dedicated to their cause to the Great Serpent in the Sky. But that hasn't always been the case. After they ended the Serpent's Crusade about 70 years back, House Varun did take a real run at trying to normalize relations with the rest of the galaxy. It's why they have an embassy here in the first place, why they were included in the armistice negotiations. But then, without warning, they left, leaving behind, to our knowledge, just the ambassador and his duty under the armistice. Yes, just like us. How magnanimous of you. Of course, but there is another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmor is actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare, but it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. It would at least be a speedier negotiation, but I, of course, hope the Ambassador is alive and well. Now, the Embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here, this device should get you all the way down to the Embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions, or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain. Hello. 